On today's program, we'll be talking with Pastor Ted Wilson, President of the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, and we'll visit a church in Italy to find out the secret to their success in reaching their community. All that and more coming up next on Global Mission Snapshots. Just before he went up to heaven, Jesus gave us a command. He gave us a mission. Jesus said, go, go unto all the world, telling them of his love. This is our mission. This is our global mission. Hello, I'm Gary Krauss and welcome to Global Mission Snapshots, where we give you a glimpse of what's happening with Adventist Mission around the world. Today we'll be talking with Cliffman Shamira Dean from the Global Mission Center for South Asian Religions about how to better understand what others believe and more effectively share what we believe. And Pastor Ted Wilson talks about how revival and reformation is important for mission and how mission is important for revival and reformation. But first, Let's visit a church in Italy that struggled with where to start when they wanted to reach out to people in their community. Milan, Italy, one of the most secularized regions of Europe, home to amazing architecture, music, fancy shops, fashion, and everything that can make your empty heart feel full. Well, at least that's what the people who live here would like to think. Italy is also home to more than 60 million people, and there is only one Adventist for every 6,900 people. The Adventist Church has had a difficult time growing here. We have a very secularized society, um, and it affects the society and the church also. So it's not easy to come to people that think they don't need God, don't need religion. So we must find strategies to come around all the biases and prejudices that people have, have in their minds. So this is our challenge and we see that some results are appearing, appearing here and there. La preghiera è la grande arma che Dio ha dato alle sue creature. Outside of Milan is the area of Bergamo. Here a small Seventh-day Adventist church meets each Sabbath. The word small can be used to describe the building that they meet in, not the size of the congregation. Several years ago, the church was small and had no growth. Church leaders decided to try establishing small groups that would use prayer as their outreach to the community. The members organized into small groups that would meet several times a week in members' homes. They would study the Bible for a deeper understanding of Jesus and his love for them. At the same time, they prayed that God would bring people to them so they could share their faith. For several months, this continued, and then people from outside the church started attending the small groups. These new arrivals were co-workers and mutual friends who wanted to find a deeper meaning in their lives. Slowly, the small church started to grow. Sabbath school became a time of deep spiritual study and prayer. The small groups would meet in their own Sabbath school groups and then pour over the scriptures together. Then the last 15 minutes of Sabbath school were dedicated to praying in small groups. These groups would pray for God to bring new people to them, people who were also searching for the truth in Jesus. Soon the church had more than doubled in size and had quickly outgrown its small building. Today there are 11 lay leaders at the church and each one is in charge of a small group. There is even talk of starting a church plant in another nearby community to alleviate the crowded church each Sabbath. God has truly answered the prayers of the Bergamo Church. In the mission of the church, the gospel has not completed its mission. 
until in the church, between the members, in its totality has accepted the character of Christ. In such a way, we will meet one time per week. After, we can meet two times per week. Sometimes people meet three, four, five times per week. We eat together, we enjoy together, we sing together, and we also weep together. And in such a way, the Lord will put people in His church. Your prayerful support of the mission offering helps provide resources to small churches like Bergamo as they strive to reflect the character of Christ and bring the members of their community to Jesus. Thank you for supporting the mission of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Our guest today is Elder Ted Wilson, who is president of the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. Thanks for joining us, Pastor Wilson. Uh, revival and Reformation is something that I've heard you talk about many, many, many times. Why is that such a central theme for you? Uh, well, thanks, Gary, for asking that question because really at the very foundation of all that we are and hope to be as a Seventh-day Adventist church and as a people on the road towards eternal life by God's grace, we need to be so sensitive to the impression of the Holy Spirit because I believe we're living in the last days of Earth's history. I believe Bible prophecy explains to us that uh, the next great event that is going to take place when you study the, the, uh, the book of Daniel and the chapter 2 and the statue and all the different kingdoms, the last thing that is going to come is going to be a stone not cut out by hands mm -hmm. that is going to come down and representing the kingdom of God and it's going to smash this statue. Well, we're living, I think, in the very, very end tips of the toes <laughs> of that statue. And the next thing that's going to happen of enormous magnitude is Christ's soon coming. However, he hasn't come yet. And that's the burning question that many Christians have. I mean, the Lord said he was going to come, but he hasn't coming yet. How do we then allow the Lord to help us in this great mission and prepare ourselves personally for what he wants to see happen through us. Now he could have sent the entire um, uh, complement of angels from heaven and done everything necessary, but he's using us. Mm -hmm. He wants us to be part of the mission of the church. He wants the, the universe to see what a loving, kind, uh, open approach from heaven towards cre creatures or his creation will do in allowing people to make a free choice to serve him mm. and to be part of the mission. In order to have that kind of experience though, we need to humble ourselves before the Lord and allow the Holy Spirit to really work in our lives. And that's what revival and reformation is all about. This isn't something that some committee at the General Conference cooked up a nice little phrase this is from Scripture. It's part of the experience of, of the Christian and of the believer all the way through the Bible. It is uh, heavily emphasized in the spirit of prophecy that we need to be revived and then we need to be changed or reformed. And that doesn't happen by our own power. It's by being in connection with the Lord, by spending time in Bible study in studying materials that are going to lead us close to the Lord, like the Spirit of Prophecy and, and, and other materials. Uh, spending time in intense prayer with the Lord, pleading for the latter reign of the Holy Spirit and that the Lord will use us uh, on an everyday basis. And it really means uh, coming closer and closer to the Lord. So as Philippians 2 says, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Well, how do you do that? How, how does that happen? Uh, in the book of 2 Chronicles uh, chapter 7, a verse we like to, to emphasize in this area, verse 14, uh, God was speaking directly to King Solomon at the time of the consecration of the temple. And uh, the Lord is speaking and it says, if my people which are called by my name, and then there are four verbs that happen uh, that, that, are, that are listed here, humble themselves, pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. 
So first of all, we need to humble ourselves and realize that we're in great need of the Lord. In fact, uh, the spirit of prophecy tells us that uh, revival is our greatest need, mm -hmm. to be revived in the Lord, not just once or twice, but every day, uh, to humbly submit ourselves. And then, of course, we need to be praying. We need to be people who are vitally involved in intercessory prayer and asking the Lord to, to use us in a powerful way. Uh, then, of course, as we seek His face or His word, He will help us to know what we are supposed to do in His service. And then as we become filled with His power, we will turn from our own desires and participate in the mission of the church, which is to do God's will rather than our own selfish desire. So really, revival and reformation is a very important step in preparing for what I believe is soon to come. The book of Joel talks about the incredible outpouring of God's Spirit that is going to come upon His church, upon older ones, upon younger ones, people who are going to be ready to proclaim uh, the loud cry, the final cry to the world that that Jesus loves you, that He has paid the price for you, that His righteousness is all sufficient for you, that His judgment is come, but you can be hidden securely in Him and not have to worry about the judgment if you are humbling yourself before Him. To warn people to stay away from uh, uh, churches or, or bodies that might be teaching something other than what the Bible teaches and to identify with the wonderful, loyal sign that God has His seventh-day Sabbath, rather than worshiping on another day, which He never sanctified. But the seventh-day Sabbath is His sign. And when we proclaim these with love, and when we are able through humility to, to humble ourselves before the Lord and say, Lord, use me, you better believe that He is going to use you in a powerful way. So really, Revival and Reformation is simply preparing ourselves to be used by God so that we can invite others to see Him very, very soon. Mm. So the link between mission and Revival and Reformation is integral. It's, it's complete, it, it's seamless. Okay. You've, got, you've got to have this revival and this humility before the Lord and allow Him to work through you and that propels you into the mission. Pastor Wilson, thank you so much for joining us today. A couple of years ago, I read an academic study of the number of Muslims, Hindus, and Buddhists in the United States who say that they don't know even one Christian. Uh, this is like 40%, 30%, it varies. But these are people who we meet every day. We may see them in a store. They may drive us in a taxi. They may food, um, feed us at a, a, a service at a, at a restaurant but they say they don't know even one Christian. Well, the Global Mission Centers are established to help us find better ways to connect with, to communicate with, and build bridges with people from other faiths. And so it's my pleasure to introduce you to our guest, Cliffman Shamuruddin, who is from the Center for South Asian Religions. Cliffman, thank you for joining us. Sure. This is a very important center because you're, you're, you're representing a huge number of people around the world. When we look, for example, at the number of Hindus, how many, how many people? I mean, the, no one really knows how much Hindus there are, but you're talking about close to a billion, you know, yeah. 900,000 yeah. plus around the world because Hinduism is not just a religion where you can just count. 
it's actually the way of life. Exactly, yeah. And so it's very difficult to put a number, but, but it's many. And the thing is, we know that a large number of these people have never even heard the name of Jesus, let alone of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. That's right. So, Kriffman, tell, tell us, please, what are the sort of activities that you're involved in? Well, uh, apart from, from building bridges, we, we, we feel that this message, this gospel that we have, is such a, such a, a powerful thing that changes the lives of people, not just in, in, uh, in accepting Jesus Christ as their Savior, but also their life, mm -hmm. the way to live, the way to eat. And as Adventists, we have a holistic message, especially the health message mm -hmm. that we have received and, and we have put it into practice in many places, but, but at the same time, we have neglected in lots of ways. And in the Caribbean, in Trinidad, that has been noticeable. Mm. Now, so but before you go on, you are based in Trinidad. Yes. Uh, now, why? I would have thought, uh, are, there, are there people from that tradition who live there? Yes. Okay. And, and that's, my, that's part of my story, okay. is that in the, in the Caribbean, Trinidad, Guyana, and Suriname, as well as some other islands, there's a large descent and population of people that are directly associated with India. Okay. You know, just about the, in the 1800s, the British who owns and control many of that part of the world brought the Indians from India to work on the sugar plantations. Okay. And so that's where, and that's how I end up in the mm. Caribbean. So my great-grandmother is actually from India. Okay, good. She came as a little girl. Okay, that explains it. Continue. You were telling me about the health message, yeah. Yes, and so, so we, we focus on, 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 on using the gospel so that they can meet people in ways that they never imagined, and that's where the health message comes in. In a country where diabetes is almost an epidemic, mm. where you, if you meet three people, two of them will have it, or they know somebody have it, or they know somebody actually died from it. Wow. That's how bad it is. And, but there's not much being done. And so we went into the communities and introduced health, and teaching people how to live a better lifestyle using the principles that we learned from Ellen White. Mm. And this has changed the community. I had some comments that people have shared and said, we have been waiting for something like this, and we finally found it. And these mm. are Hindus responding, please come back. Mm. Give us more. This is what we want. You know, teach us about how we can be, how we can live better, how we can take care of our bodies and our families. Now, when you say you went into the community, what did you do? Well, when we went into the community, we, we, we offered the basic things of health screening, um, talking to people, listening to their problems, understanding the challenges they have, the families they're experiencing, how are they dealing with life? And so we have eight tables, and we use the, the New Start approach, uh -huh. where we go through and we talk about fresh air, exercise, health, diet, nutrition, all these things we went through with these people. And then we have, we have the, the counselor table where we have prayer mm. for these people. And I have a story. As a result of one of, the, of, one of these um, activities we have done, we, I met this family who was majorly depressed. They have lost their daughter mm. about three years prior to that. And they have received no help. And they're about maybe 10 minutes from an Adventist church. And here's a family in dire needs of help. Mm. But they don't, there's nobody to help them. They've been cut off from the entire family. Nobody talks to them. They're just isolated. And when we met them, their lives have changed. And today they're in, enrolled in Bible studies. Uh -huh. And they have been so excited that they have a new family that cares about them and does not ostracize them in any way. Wow. So how do you make the initial connection? You said that you had like a, a table set up. Is this on, on the side of the street or how? Well, this is what we do. We go into a village that we've never been to. We don't know anyone. And we just drive down the street and we stop at homes and we ask the Hindu family if we could do a health um, fair or a health activity at their home. And they said, yes, please use our home. Ah. And so that's what we do. We pray about it and we just stopped at homes and we just ask for permission. Okay. That's all we do. Wow, that's excellent. So instead of expecting them to come to you, you're actually going to them. That's right. We okay. go to them and we mingle with the people and, and associate with them. Yeah. How does it make you feel, Cliff, to be involved in this sort of ministry? Well, it has changed my life because, you know, it, it's, as, as a young boy growing up in the Adventist church, I find the Adventist church as, as, a, as an entity that is isolated from the community. Uh -huh. And it does not integrate itself. It's just on the 
on the farthest end from the community and it's there and it's noticeable as, as a strange place. Mm. And, and so that's the type of community I grew up in where, uh, in terms of church. And I wonder, you know, what type of Christ we, we served, you mm -hmm. know, and, 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 and as, as a growing up, God has led me back to the very same thing that I have ch had challenges with, to, to, to make a difference, to change and to show there's a different way to share the gospel. Fantastic, Cliffman. Thank you so much for sharing with us. Uh, a wonderful reminder, thank you, Cliff, of the, the basic fundamental building block of Christ's method, and that was not to keep to himself. He came to earth, he put on human skin, he got his hands dirty, he pitched his tent among us, as John says. And as Cliffman is doing in his territories, I invite you to pray to God and find, is there some way that you too can be involved in the community to mingle for Jesus? Welcome to the Villa Shaw Church, located in the country of Portugal. This congregation is mostly made up of African members who immigrated to Portugal. This lively church loves coming together to worship each Sabbath. Their praise fills the neighborhood and now their pews are just as full. Their hearts are overjoyed to celebrate the great things God does in their lives each week. Music is a big part of their celebration. On this Sabbath, the pastor preaches about how to share Jesus with their community. The members listen attentively so they can be a good example and love their neighbors. Their desire is to put into practice what they preach. This is Eli and his mom. They are active members in this church. Eli takes part in Sabbath school and the main service. Each week after church, the members reach out to the community. They split up into groups and pass out literature so that the people can learn about Jesus and visit their church. Both the children and adults are excited to share what they know about Jesus with their neighbors. Each paper they pass out is a chance for someone to discover a relationship with our Heavenly Father. Eli and his friends have fun doing this. They enjoy talking with people and seeing the reactions to God's message. Sometimes this is the opportunity to talk about Jesus with those who have never heard him before. The members also gather food to give it to some of the homes they visit. This simple act of kindness helps open doors and hearts and can lead to lasting friendships. At the end of the day, the members return to the church. Some of them continue singing and praising the Lord until the night. The congregation shows tremendous faith. They are not afraid to share their friend Jesus with others in their community. Please pray for this church and other churches who are reaching their communities around the world. And thank you for supporting the mission of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. We sometimes think of the mission field as being on distant islands or in remote villages. And while there's truth in that, more than ever in world's history, the mission fields are now also in the cities of the world with their teeming millions of people. So please pray for mission to the cities, such as Lisbon, as the Seventh-day Adventist Church places special emphasis on planting new groups of believers in urban areas around the world. If you're watching this program, chances are you believe in and care about mission. Recently, the Seventh-day Adventist Church started a new mission magazine called Mission 360. If you live in North America and would like to receive this new magazine, as well as news about global mission, just call this toll-free number, 1-800-648-5824. Or you can visit our website at www.adventistmission.org offer. Or better yet, wherever you are in the world, you can download the free digital magazine for your iPad Kindle HD or Android tablet. Just search for Adventist Mission or Mission 360 in their app stores. Well, thanks for being with us today and I hope you can join us next time. As we close, I hope you will prayerfully watch this music video 
featuring the choral Jovem de Washington as they sing Always With My God. <laughs> 